Hi there. My name is Janine Valenti and I work at Kessler Institute for Rehabilitation. And I'm, I'm on campus about two to three times a week, except for right now during COVID. But if you haven't received your backpack yet, you will get a backpack chock full of information. And our the entire spinal cord injury team, uh, all of our contacts are right there in your backpack. So even though I'm not on campus, you could still get in touch with me via email or cell phone. Um, I am a quadriplegic. I was injured probably just like you were. In one cruel second, our whole life changed. And for me, that was 19 years ago. And I'm, I'm a Kessler grad as well. You're about to be. I am a Kessler grad. There's no place to do, better place to do your, um, your rehab. Um, and I, I'm so happy to say that my life is great again after you deal with the initial shock and one of the most important things in your recovery is your bowel management and your bladder management. And that's where I come in because even though I don't like to talk about those things, I am motivated to talk about those things because as soon as you get your bowel and bladder together, um, you are on your way to having a great life again. Those are the two biggest obstacles to conquer, I think. So how the, a spinal cord injury affects the bladder in almost the same ways that it affects the bowel. Um, what happens is um, if you have a spinal cord injury, you most likely have what's called a neurogenic bladder, just like you have a neurogenic bowel. And how the two play out is very similar. Because if, if you're trying to manage your bladder, what happens is either you, you, you don't have your muscles anymore to control the flow. So what happens is you're either constantly leaking from your urethra, known as a bladder accident, or um, you want to urinate and can't. And when the bladder empties, beyond your control and you can't stop it. That's what's called having a reflexive bladder. And when you um, want to stop and you can't, oh no, actually when you want to urinate and can't, that's what's known as a flaccid bladder. But those two conditions are under the umbrella of neurogenic bladder. Now the goal of the bladder management program is to avoid accidents at all costs, to remain free from infection. Um, and we want to protect our kidneys, our bladder and our skin. And we wanna pick a method because there are a few methods out there that is going to increase our independence. And that's different for all of us, for each and every one of us, we all have different ability levels now. So you have to decide, it's a personal decision. You have to decide what works best for you. Now these are, if you're a male, you have four options. If you're female, you have three. Okay, so um, we can choose intermittent catheterization, which is known as eye seeing. You can choose to have an indwelling Foley catheter or a suprapubic catheter. And if you're a man, you can have an ex external catheter. So as a woman, I have personal experience with the first three. So I can talk to you about those. But first let's talk about intermittent catheterization. Um, a catheter, is used to insert into your urethra and remove all your urine every four to six hours, you're gonna be on a schedule. But in order for that schedule to be predictable and you not have accidents in between the four and six hours is that 
you have to limit your intake of water. So that is no more than two liters a day. Uh, and you'll get to know what that is. But the advantages of this method is that you don't have a drainage bag at your ankle. You just intermittently catheterize yourself every four to six hours. And now you have a lower risk of a, a urinary tract infection because there's nothing hanging out in your bladder that your body naturally wants to fight. So it's lower risk of infection and your genitals are freed up. That's a good thing. Um, but you need to have fine motor control of your, of your fingers and your hands for this to work. Now, when I was first injured, I was determined to make this method work because I did not want to wear a leg bag. But I found out that it consumed too much time because for a woman, a, a woman's urethra isn't, access, isn't as readily accessible as a man's. So for me, I had to get in bed. I had to transfer myself into bed and I had to undress myself and dress myself. That was not an option. That took hours to the point where by the time I got dressed again, I had to almost go. I'd only have like an hour left or before I'd have to get in bed again. And that was no quality of life to me, for me. But if you're a man and you can easily get to your urethra and you don't have, you can stay in your wheelchair, you don't have to transfer you to your bed. This might be a very independent option for you. Now, if you decide that that's what you want to do, you ask your nurse for a backpack and she, an IC, an IC backpack. And he or she will give you a backpack with a lot of different catheters in it, different styles. Um, and you want to speak to your case manager because your case manager is going to look at your insurance and is going to be able to tell you which catheters are covered under your insurance. And with most insurances, when your durable medical equipment uh, is covered, it is in, in network, you shouldn't even have to pay a copay. So that's good news. If money is no object though, you can pick any of those catheters. But if money is gonna be a consideration, you wanna know which ones are covered from the beginning. Now, a Foley catheter, this is what I had to go with. I didn't like the idea, but now I love the idea. I'll tell you how my, my mindset changed. So now I have a Foley catheter that's inserted in my urethra, but it only has to be changed once every three to four weeks. Now, to my knowledge, every insurance plan should pay for a care, a nurse practitioner to come into your home once every three to four weeks to change your Foley catheter. Um, and with that, you're gonna have, your Foley connects into a larger, a longer pipe, like a tube. And that tube gets secured around your leg by Velcro strips. And on your ankle is the drainage bag. And that's where urine empties into. And um, with this method, the advantage to this method is that you can drink as much water as you want. And the more water you drink, the smoother your bowel program is going to go. Um, but you do have an increased risk of bladder infection because you have a tube that's hanging out in your bladder and your bladder wants to fight it. Your body thinks it's an intruder and tries to fight it with bacteria. So you always kind of have an infection, but you wait until the infection gets really bad before you ask for antibiotics because you can get immune to the antibiotics that work for you. So it's a little, you have to manage, manage your body a little better. And also these, um, 
these methods could cause more independence for you. Now, um, there is some maintenance to this because your leg bag has to get changed, like has to get rinsed out every day. And depending on individual use, I change my leg bag every week with my tubes every week get changed for new ones, but not my Foley catheter. My Foley catheter stays in three weeks to a month, but it's easier to put in. Oh no, I'm sorry, that's a super pubic. But um, sorry about that. Uh, and your drainage bag gets, your leg bag gets traded in to an overnight bag. I'm pretty sure you know what those overnight bags are because I'm pretty sure you're using them right now for overnight use. They have four times the capacity of a leg bag. So you don't have to worry about waking up in the middle of the night and having it empty. This will get you through the night. And your nurse will tell you how to clean everything out. She will give you all the instructions you need. Now, after 10 years of being injured and having my indwelling Foley catheter, my healthcare team recommended that I have a surgically placed suprapubic catheter because they looked at my urethra and they cringed because they knew that it was in a lot of pain because it was very red and irritated and swollen. And so for the good of my body, they recommended that I get a suprapubic catheter. So what that was is I went in in the morning and I came at home by the early evening and a surgical hole is placed from your abdomen right into your bladder. So now my genitals are freed up. I don't have a constant tube that is rubbing against my urethra to cause pain. And uh, I still have my, my um, tubes on the side of my leg, but I can make the tube shortened so I can wear Bermuda shorts, capris, or in the summertime when I go swimming, I put my bag across my stomach so I can go swimming in a one piece. Because my, my, my bikini days are well over, well over. Um, and I still need an overnight drainage bag that's bigger. And I have a decreased risk of getting a UTI because the abdomen is where my tube inserts and my abdominal area is cleaner than my surrounding urethral area, okay? And my catheter changes are easier because I can see. So I can actually change my tube and I don't have to wait for a nurse or a caregiver. So this increased my independence. Now, an external catheter is just for men because it goes on like a condom does. It goes right over the penis like a condom would. Uh, but not everybody can use this method because you have to be able to fully empty your bladder in one, one session. And it requires a leg bag still and you still have the tubes on the side of your leg, but putting it on, it's, it doesn't stay on well for everybody and also can cause a lot of skin irritations. So this method is not for everybody. And I recommend that you talk to um, Dr. Trevor Dyson Hudson because this is his preferred method and he would like to, he would, um, if you have any questions, he'd be more than happy to answer them for you. Okay, signs of urinary tract infection. Okay, this you're probably going to refer to more than once. I have UTIs, but I've only gotten a fraction of these symptoms. So I've never gotten a fever, never gotten chills from an infection. The only headaches I get is from autonomic dysreflexia, when my body is in pain and my and my brain can't tell me, but my body has to alert me that something's wrong. 
Um, I've never gotten nauseous from a UTI, but 100% of the time I see white like crystals or white sentiment, sediment in my leg bag and in my overnight bag and in my tubing. I can see it. My urine is always either cloudy or dark. And I always feel extremely tired. Now, I'm the first to admit that this injury in general makes you tired, but you, so you have a new, a new sense of fatigue that you get to know. But when you're tired from a, from a UTI, it is a lot more tired than you usually are. When I cannot hold my eyes open, when I have to take a nap, I know that my UTI is getting, getting bad. And then when my bladder starts to squeeze, because my bladder is what's in pain, a, a UTI, a, a urinary tract infection is very, very painful. I never had one until I became injured. So I didn't know what they felt like, but friends and family are quick to tell me they hurt. So your body's gonna to react to that. And when your bladder is really hurting, it's gonna spasm. That tells me my UTI is getting bad. I never really had lower back pain, never had back pain. And autonomic dysreflexia once in a while. Um, the only time that I've ever gotten autonomic dysreflexia, it's when my tubes of my urine tubes get kinked or blocked and the urine can't flow to my bag. And when your urine can't flow to your bag, your natural bladder starts filling up. And that's when your body, uh, that's when your body really protests and lets you know that it's in pain, that your bladder's filling up, that you have to empty. And that's when you get dysreflexia. Um, now you don't wanna take antibiotics unless ordered by your doctor because not all antibiotics are the same. They all kill only certain bacteria. So what happens is you're gonna bring in a urine sample to your doctor and your urine sample cannot be taken from your leg bag because your leg bag is already contaminated with too much bacteria to read. So you have to get a new tubing, a fresh sample from a fresh tube. You bring it into your urologist or your doctor and he or she sends it out and the bacteria has to grow for five days for them to know which antibiotic is going to be effective for your particular individual bladder infection. But they're going to take, they don't wanna lose five days in treating you. So they're gonna guess which bacteria might be the better choice. But once the bacteria has time to grow, your doctor's gonna call you in five days and say either you're on the right track, I prescribed the right antibiotic for you, you're on your way, you should be better in no time, or the doctor will call you and say, I gave you the wrong antibiotic, it doesn't kill all of that bacteria. This is a better choice in antibiotics and he might change you change his choice. And that's how it works. But if you do think you have a UTI, um, uh, also there's always an odor that goes with it that will tell you something's wrong. But if you think you're coming down with a UTI, you wanna cut back on alcohol because that alcohol um, bacteria will thrive in it. It will th thrive in sugary drinks and uh, caffeinated drinks. So you want to really just stick to water if you have a UTI. What medications are used to assist with bladder management? Generally, Ditropan and Detrol. They help calm the bladder so that it will not um, spasm. And Flomax is used, but only for men. 
and it helps the prostate relax. And that also keeps the bladder calm. But you can't use Flomax with children. Children, can, children or women cannot use Flomax. Um, and finally, brings us back to our resources now. You can find all you need to know about bladder management in your Yes You Can book was put out by the Paralyzed Veterans Association. Everything we talked about are in the table of contents under bladder management. You get these um, laminated pages from the Kessler Foundation, the um, go-to information for bladder management and how to um, handle autonomic dysreflexia. United Spinal so Association publishes a consumer guide that gives you tips on what to buy to manage your bowel programs, your bladder management program, and any other uh, and many other resources you can you might want through your injury. And we also give you a DVD, but some of you might not ha have access to a DVD player. And if you are in that category, um, there's a YouTube channel at the bottom uh, and uh, a bottom of the slide. And uh, it will tell you where to find the same information on YouTube. And ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to our last slide of the day, which explains how to get in touch with the spinal cord in injury team. Again, my name is Janine Valenti, and um, I'm also a peer counselor. I am a chapter director for Think First, which is an injury prevention program that we bring into schools. And um, I also do the education, as you can see educational classes for bowel and bladder. Um, I'd like to thank you for joining me today and I look forward to answering any questions you might have should you need to get in touch with me.